Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today for worship in this technology space. I'm Dave, and if this is your first time finding this page, may I recommend the video that you'll find linked right up there. It'll tell you a little bit about me and about the parish. Today, our psalm offers that no matter where we go, we do not leave God's reach. Trusting in God's presence here in this space, we gather to worship. And the call to worship today is drawn from Psalms 139 and 8. O Lord, you have searched and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in before and behind and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's so high I cannot attain it. And together from Psalm 8, O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the sun, the moon, the stars, all you've established, what are human beings that you're mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet, You've made them a little lower than God, crowned them with glory and honor. And our opening hymn of praise, sing praise to God who reigns above, number 126.
We read in Paul's letter to the Romans that all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, and we seek to be led by the Spirit to God who created and loves us. Trusting in God's mercy, let's acknowledge to ourselves and before God the ways we fall short from what God intends for us, all of which God already knows. Lord of all, when we take the time, when we're reflective, when we listen to your Spirit guiding us, then we recognize not only does our society do things that are offensive to your honor and glory, we also benefit from them, and to varying degrees we also embody and enable them. Around us we see a spirit of judgment and condemnation, quickly identifying the faults, the sins of others. Yet, we often are slow to recognize the faults that are our own. We see all creation groaning around us, and we turn a deaf ear, surrounding ourselves with various distractions. We're quick to excuse ourselves from responsibility. We're young, we're old, we're tired, we're busy. And it's difficult to imagine how our small part might make any real difference. We condemn others for not listening to reason, but we build our own filter bubbles that confirm our biases, listening only to those that agree with us. And then we assume that our will equates with your own. We confess that we do not like to acknowledge the many ways we fail to follow your commandment to love you and our neighbors. We've failed to ensure justice for the vulnerable. We've not embodied your kind of compassion. In our own ways, we too have been arrogant instead of walking with you in humility. Forgive us, we pray, for forgetting that everyone is created in your image and therefore worthy of our compassion. Life-giving God, wash us clean, restoring our imaginations and our hearts. Let your courage and compassion flow through our veins until we love with abandon and our hands reach out in blessing. Shape us into the people you call us to be, for the creation does wait with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. We pray these things in Christ's name. Sisters and brothers, hear the word of the Lord. In the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, God says unequivocally, irrevocably, you are my own, you are forgiven, and I need you to be about my business in the world. Even as we've gathered in this way, in this virtual space, this is none other than the house of God, the gate of heaven, and wherever we are, wherever we are. God is present with us. We're united in Christ and the Spirit intercedes for us. There's nowhere we can flee from God's Spirit. Nothing we cannot speak to our Creator. In this time, in this space, we share the hopes of our hearts, the questions of our minds, the worries that keep us up at night. And we pray to the Lord our God, who is like no other, first and last, beginning and end, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. Gracious God, 
who loves all that you've made. We thank you for making us daughters and sons, co-heirs with Christ, sisters and brothers of one another, bearing witness with the Spirit that we are the children of God. This morning we do pray for the whole church that in the field of this world it may be the good seed that grows into your harvest. Incarnate One, all of creation is groaning, waiting an eager longing to be set free from everything that holds it in bondage. So, praying for your whole creation, we dare to ask that you would come to us, be born again in this place, in us. In the midst of our boredom, our self-congratulation, our closeted vision, startle us with the tearing, the cry, the first breath of life that will not be restrained. We remember those in our midst and those known only to you who are consumed with fear, fear not only for their livelihoods, but for their very lives. We pray for all, all those who are fleeing, fleeing from pasts which by which they're haunted or fleeing from real threats. We lift up those who feel abandoned by a future for which they'd hoped. We plead for all who do not know that they are loved and chosen. We pray for all the peoples of this earth, all nations and leaders. We pray that all may come to know the ways that lead to peace. Loving God who searches and knows us, reveal to us those places in our own hearts that need to be broken so that we might go to the places in the world that break your heart. Do not let us turn away from the people who need to know that they are not alone. Ease the loneliness of those unable to see their families and those without family. Expand the household of faith to include all those at the margins of society, the imprisoned and the impoverished, those who've been neglected, those seeking asylum and safety. May we not reject those whom Jesus came to save. We pray for those who are ill and those facing death. We pray that they may find hope in the faith that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory to be revealed to them. We pray for those we know and love that they may see the bond between them and you and that wherever they go, you're with them. This morning we intercede for our own divided souls. Help us to trust that you are indeed at work in every mingled heart, every conflicted community. Grant us the resolve to do whatever is required for everyone to have enough to eat, a safe place to live, the ability to get the care that they need, an education that values individuals and creates a society of people of character. May our imaginations not fall short of your ability to make all things possible. Nourish the life that you've planted within us that we might keep seeding the world with your truth and your grace. All our prayers we bring this morning in the name of Jesus, 
who gave his life out of love for the world and who gave us these words to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This week, uh, Kathy sent out an email with a link to a video. I invite you to contact her if you did not get that email. That video is um, a performance by Josh Groban with um, to the song You Raise Me Up and someone has taken his performance track and overlaid it with um, scenes and with the lyrics for the song. It is, it is quite well done. There are other ways of um, listening to that song as well. I happen to like the um, the performance by Celtic Woman. There are other groups that have done very fine jobs as well. Selah is one. Um, if you browse around here on YouTube, you'll find a few, I'm sure. Um, anyway, consider um, the link that Kathy sent out to, uh, this week. It, it is well done, and you could sing along with it if you want it. And then, during the week, you know, if you don't have opportunity to do it today, do it dur during the week. But take some time out and enjoy that um, enjoy that song that would have been today's anthem. The gifts that we bring are in part financial. They support the work of the church. Um, there are other uh, ways that we put those financial resources to work in the world as well. And... Um, if you are looking for some good ideas, uh, get in touch with me. The, um, the gifts, our prayers, our presence showing up, our gifts, financial, our service, the things that we do for the church and for those in the community, and our witness, the ways that we share the good news of God's grace, God's mercy, God's love. Um, these are what we bring to the table and how we make a difference in the world. Friends, the scriptures tell us that all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, and given such a divine affirmation and gratitude and praise, we offer a portion of the resources entrusted to us as a sign of our loyalty and our faith. We offer them to the Lord of hosts, who is the first and the last. Let's offer these gifts with this prayer. Loving and ever-present God, receive our tithes and our offerings, our worship, and our lives to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a hymn, and then we'll have the benediction for this section before... Uh, returning for the scripture and sermon section, and then there's the 11 o'clock Zoom.
Sisters and brothers, however dark the night gets, however difficult the days, whatever we've done amiss or left undone, know, know that the Creator who made you still claims you in covenant love. The Redeemer who died for your sake lives again by the word of God. The sustainer of all creation yet breathes courage into your heart. Sisters and brothers, the triune God still engages with us in mercy. Serve then with boldness and joy.